If I were a real estate buyer right now, I'd be so confused, just like many of you probably are. And that's because there's so much talk of a real estate market crash. All these negative headlines, they're all around us, but the home prices, are they really crashing in Florida? So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's truly happening here in Florida with the real estate market. We're gonna talk about supply and demand principles and my projections and advice for 2023. And hopefully this video will give you some guidance and some things to think about. So let's jump right into it. Real estate prices fluctuate during the year. Let's start off by reviewing Florida cyclical prices. Here's a chart from Florida Realtors Sunstat illustrating the median sales price over time in Florida. Our key selling season starts in January and runs up until about May. You can see it very clearly on this map. Prices increase from the beginning of the year up until about June when it peaks. And there's a few reasons for it. First off, snowbirds are usually in town for that time of the year and many end up purchasing. Why wouldn't they, right? Florida is awesome. It's a winter time that typically nudges people up north that they've had enough of the cold weather, especially if it's a really bad winter and they're ready to move somewhere warmer such as Florida. Now, those with children want to make a home purchase in advance of the school year starting, right? Which is in September. So a lot of them will purchase before the summertime and for all those reasons sales would typically ramp up in q2 peaking in may and then it starts slowing down in the summertime and prices typically will come back down but then there's a second albeit smaller wave of buyers that are typically in town around october november right before the holiday season and so then you typically will see the median prices tick back up again right around december when the home purchases close. And then the buying cycle resets again in January. So what specifically happened this year though in 2022? Medium prices rose at a very fast pace in the beginning of the year as sellers and buyers were rushing to take advantage of what we all knew was going to be a market that was just about to shift, right? Because of the fast increasing mortgage rates and inflation. Just to give you an idea of how extensive appreciation was for the first of this year, the median price for a single family home in Florida from February to June increased by over 10%. That's pretty crazy, especially when normal historical home price appreciation for the entire year have been around 3.5%. And so the median price for single family homes peaked in June and then started gradually dropping over the summertime. And as of October, it was $401,000, which is a 5% price drop. These price fluctuations from the summer into autumn are on par with Florida seasonality, but the price drop of 5% was a bit steeper than usual because of the buyer pullback due to the increasing mortgage rates and diminishing buyer confidence in the real estate market, right? Because there's so much talk of a market crash and so people are waiting on the sidelines. And you've seen these type of headlines before, so I'm going to give you an example. Florida home sales falls nearly 25% in October. These types of headlines make it seem like the housing market is just imploding. And for sure, the number of home sales when compared to last year is way, way down by double digits, which could indicate we're in a housing crisis. But we really have to look at the other side of the equation. So if transaction is so much lower, why have we not seen prices crash? And to me, 5% down during the summertime is not a market crash. The reason why the prices haven't dropped yet is very simple. It's due to supply and demand, due to the relationship. And so I'm gonna show you this very simple illustration. Demand is driven by buyers, such as yourself and investors. Supply is driven by inventory, new listings, and new construction opportunities. But each one of these gets influenced by outside forces. So for example, mortgage rates, inflation, the job situation, income, buyer sentiment, rental prices, and household formations, all of these influences the demand side. And so you know this because mortgage rates have increased so much since the beginning of the year. We're dealing with inflation. There's a lot of negative buyer sentiment. Well, guess what? Demand for homes is much lower. There's far less buyers and investors who are willing to make a purchase right now. But prices for existing homes are still holding strong, relatively speaking. And that's because sellers for resale homes are also holding back. They're not listing their homes as much as in the beginning of the year. Those that wanted to take advantage of the appreciation sold their homes months ago. And so now there are limited reasons to sell a home, especially if that means having to rebuy 
at much higher mortgage interest rates. That would make no financial sense, right? And so most sellers are staying put right now. Prices haven't dropped significantly because there's still enough demand for the number of homes that are on the market. During the height of the market, it was not unrealistic to have had 10 to 30 offers on one home. There were so many buyers bidding on the same home. It was insane. That's the reason we've had these crazy price appreciations. People overbid on homes to win over the competition, which set the new prices in the market. These days overbidding to that extent are far gone, but prices are holding because people are still offering close to asking price. Unless of course the asking price is too high versus the fair value of the home. And I'm seeing that quite often where sellers will go in with these crazy prices and then you'll start seeing all these price reductions. Now the story is a little bit different with new construction homes. A lot of builders were literally increasing their prices by tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes twice a month because there were so many buyers looking to purchase in their community. I mean, just imagine stacks of buyers on a waiting list. And so home builders increased prices because, well, they could, first of all, but also to eliminate potential buyers because there were just too many of them to attend to. I've seen some prices on new construction homes essentially double over two years. As a matter of fact, a lot of those buyers who purchased about two years ago, or even a year and a half ago, realized the price appreciation that they were able to get if they were to resell their home. And so that's what a lot of them are actually doing. You'll see a lot of resales on new construction homes that literally just closed and now it's back on the market. And builders were also having a party, but nothing is truly forever. The builders were very optimistic and they built a lot of spec homes in anticipation of buyer demand, which is now obviously diminishing. As a matter of fact, it diminished very quickly. It was almost like overnight. Keeping these spec homes or moving ready homes in the books is very expensive for these builders, right? And so a lot of them are running really great incentives, such as offering rate buy downs or providing money towards closing costs. And some builders are even dropping prices, which typically they don't like to do, to unload very quickly these move-in ready homes before the end of the year. Their goal is to increase top line sales numbers and lower costs, even if that means sacrificing margin. And that's especially true for publicly traded companies such as Taylor Morrison, for example. You can bet that they're really interested in pulling in additional sales numbers towards the end of the year in order to satisfy, well, their investors. And builders are also getting ready for a recession, which is expected to hit sometime next year. And so if you're in the market for a new construction home, now now is the time to ask for all sorts of incentives. You have absolutely nothing to lose, but only to gain because they're motivated to sell. But why do most economists not predict a market crash? So by market crash, let's just define it as a minus 20% price drop just on average, which is actually how much prices dropped during the 2008 recession was 20%. For one, builders are slowing new construction projects in anticipation of a recession, which will negatively impact the shortage of housing supply we already have right now. As we're moving into recession, mortgage rates are expected to come back down again. There's some projections out there right now that are placing the mortgage interest rates at about 5.4% towards late of next year. A price drop in mortgage rates is going to open up new opportunities for additional buyers, especially as the rental prices, which are insane right now as well, are expected to rise and in many cases are higher than mortgage payments would be if you were to purchase a home. And during recession, stock markets are typically hit really hard. And so a lot of investors will shift gears and will put money towards the real estate market, which is a much safer investment. And then lastly, the number of household formations, which are going to be driven by the largest demographic group called millennials, who are now on average about 30 to 32 years old, are forming households by living together, having children, wanting their own home, and building equity versus renting. So I personally don't believe that the real estate market is going to crash next year in Florida because of the supply and demand situation that we just talked about. We will have far less buyers in the market, so you're going to see transactions going down. But we're also going to have far less sellers who are going to be willing to sell their home. And so when it comes to supply and demand, it's going to balance out where we will have very slight appreciation, if any, going into next year if we average it out. Of course, the Q2 
time period leading up to the summertime, I do expect prices to go up slightly. Now, could it end up being wrong? Of course, this is just the best guess prediction based on the current data that's available and kind of the environment we're in, right? So if the economic and political situation evolves, so could the prediction. Now you may say, okay, well, prices aren't fair. They're gonna have to come down. People cannot afford buying a home in Florida. I believe everyone deserves a nice place to call their home, but prices are dictated by supply and demand. And here in Florida, approximately 30% of purchases are still cash purchases. And many buyers are moving from places where real estate prices are way more expensive. So just think New York City, San Diego and San Francisco and Canada. And so they come here where it's a lot more affordable for them to purchase a home. And they can come here now because remote work has really opened up many opportunities to those people who would have never been able to consider Florida as a move to destination. And remote work for the most part is here to stay. As a matter of fact, it's going to increase in the future unless you work for certain companies such as Twitter. But here's my advice for you. If you believe the market is going to crash, then absolutely don't do anything because it's got to feel right that is purchasing a home. Now, I would suggest that you continue to follow the data very carefully. If you already know of a location that you're interested in purchasing somewhere here in Florida, make sure that you connect with a local real estate agent and they can pull market data information for you because each place in Florida is going to be a little bit different. Now, if you're somebody that's on the fence, you're still confused, you have no idea, you don't know if it's going to crash, you don't know if it's going to hold, maybe talk to a financial advisor, somebody that's really focused on the real estate market and knows it really well, gain their perspective as well. If you enjoyed this video if you learned something new even if you don't agree with everything i'm saying if it was still insightful to you please do me a favor like this video it does help out the video also helps out this channel and let us know what you think do you believe that the market is going to hold is it going to crash next year leave us a comment below if you're somebody that's interested in purchasing a home in manatee county in sarasota county i would love to connect with you i work with both new construction and also resale homes if you're somebody that's not sure if you want to buy now or maybe sometime next year and you're just looking for information also call me i'd be more than happy to provide you with insights and some guidance now the real estate market has changed tremendously since mid of this year especially with hurricane ian brushing through so if you haven't seen my previous video where we talk about the home insurance market and the mortgage market please watch this video over here i think it's going to be very insightful to you and thank you so much for tuning in today especially watch until the very end i always appreciate it when you guys do take care